what's going on you guys today's video is going to be about a chevy cobalt 2006 with a 2.2 engine size and now as you can as you can see it's an ecotech now the problem that we're actually having on this chevy is it has a p0300 coat now i'm gonna go ahead and start it up so you guys can actually see and hear it the car actually stumbles stumbles really bad and it feels like it doesn't want to stay running so i'm gonna go ahead and put the key in the ignition and turn it now the check engine light it is on now as soon as i put it on drive or give it gas it's going to start flashing See, I just gave it gas and if I try to put it on drive or to go to reverse the car won't move And if it does move, it's gonna be about five to ten miles per hour But it hesitates to drive or accelerate Now I'm gonna show you in the back Now that's actually a sign the saying that the car it that it actually has a misfire coat and um, as you can see, the check engine light it's still flashing. So now, what are we gonna go, what are we gonna do to fix this issue? So let's walk up to where the hood is. P0300 means there is a misfire coat. Now it could be uh, cylinder number one and two, one and four, two and three. We don't know which one. So what we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna start removing this cover on the top. And uh, by doing that, we had to take this oil cap off. Just twist it. Pull this up. And remove the whole cover. So now that we had removed the cover on the top, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a flathead and you're gonna want to unloose this just enough so you can slide it off the air filter housing and then you also want to now this is supposed to be a clamp but they used a hose clamp in here and then on the bottom where the throttle is there's actually another one which is that one right there just get it break it loose just enough so you can actually slide slide the uh, intake off pull this up just wiggle it pull it out the hose there you go then set this to the side now you might want to take this off also this so I'm gonna go, go ahead and use some uh, pliers now here I don't know why it has two clamps in here but uh, I guess I'm gonna leave it the way it is technically it's supposed to be one on each end but I'm guessing that because of the hose is actually torn up they actually decided to use a, a hose clamp for better uh, grip oh you can see the back also you see how bad it is so we're gonna have to replace this but I'm gonna have to call the customer and let let him know so now first thing that you might want to do I already checked this but I just wanna uh, I, I wanna get this out of the way so um, I can show you exactly what I did so I'm gonna take this antifreeze hose off. First, I gotta slide that clamp back and pull this back. There you go. Sit it off to the side. And then the, first, the next thing that you wanna do is, you see the um, fuel filter rail? It, it's actually held by two 10 millimeters of sockets or screws um, so you want to break them loose and take them out completely 
So once you're taking those uh, 10 millimeters out, you're gonna lift this up. But before I lift it, I wanna show you how to uh, unclip them. So I'm gonna show you using this one at the end. So what you do, you put a, you use a flathead screwdriver and you can pry it on the bottom of this green tab and just pull up. And then with your finger or a screwdriver, you can press this and pull up at the same time. I guess I'm gonna have to uh, do it once I pull it out. But uh, to pull this rail out, you use two hands, one to hold one end over here and then the other hand to hold this other end. But since this one already have broken loose, it's actually free. So you just lift it up and then with your finger, like I was mentioning earlier, you press this down and then you pull up. There we go. Just like the way I did that, you're supposed to do it to all of them. Now you probably wondering why am I doing this but the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you guys how how good the fuel filters I mean the injectors are actually spraying and by doing by doing that is because I want to turn this facing up just like so and I'm gonna plug those um, injectors harness back into the injectors and I'm gonna turn the key so I can show you guys how good are you know how good they spraying so once we do that then we're gonna come back and take this coil pack and then the ignition control module over here off also so I can show you that uh, if it's actually uh, sp doing a spark or not but first I want to show you by um, using the injectors first before we go to the plugs now normally i'll go to the plugs first before i go to the injectors but since i wanted to get this off the way i just i started i started with the injectors first and then i'm gonna go with the plugs so i'm gonna show you guys how to do it now so basically what you have to do is just basically sit this up and then plug the um, harness back into every single one of the injectors go in the inside turn the key and then you can actually see on this uh, gap right here you can actually see from the driver's side all the way over here to the hood you can see the injectors spraying up so I'm gonna do that and show you guys in a minute So now we're gonna put this back on and then also another way for you guys to check it if it's actually getting fuel or not is by checking the the fuel uh, valve that goes in the fuel rail so by doing that you have to turn the key like three times like two or three times just enough so you can prime the uh, the system And then once you do that, you walk, you walk over to the hood. And then in here, to take this little cap off, you just untwist it. And using a, a screwdriver or anything, you know, that you can poke it. You just poke it, and then it's supposed to be a uh, fuel coming up. Now it does have pressure. That's one thing for sure. Now to check it even right, you have to check a with a filler gauge and see how much pressure it has. So now next thing is gonna be checking the coil packs. Okay, so now that we have now that we have the intake back on, the next thing that we're gonna do is gonna replace uh, remove this uh, 
ignition pack and the ignition control module over here so to remove this you have to use a 10 millimeters and it's actually being held you know it's held by uh four 10 millimeters of uh, screws and just break them loose one by one and then once you take them off like once you break them loose you have to disconnect it so to disconnect this harness you just pry this back this little white tap pry it back there you go and then once you pry it back with your hand or screwdriver or however however you guys feel comfortable press this down and pull back and that's how you pull it out So now we're gonna finish taking this out completely to remove the ignition coil pack. So once you break all of them loose, you just basically pull them out. You can sit them somewhere. In this case, I'm gonna sit it over here in the top. And they just basically gotta lift up in one side and then lift up on the other side. And then it will, the whole part, it will come out completely. Now, over here we got the ignition coil pack with the ignition boot in the bottom. And then what I want to show you is I'm, I want to take, I'm going to take all the spark plugs out. I'm going to take all of them out so you guys can see. So now that we have removed the plugs out, uh, you guys can actually see it on the top, the little, the tip. Now, if you take a look at this one, this is actually pretty much almost done. Like it's it's done. Like it, it it's not gonna go anywhere. And then this other one, it has a lot of oil, like a lot of carbon buildup. Same thing for the other ones. So out of these four, this first one over here to the right is actually the one that is pretty damaged. So I also want to show you guys how to test them out. So to test them out, what you do is you grab the same coil pack that you actually pulled out and you sit it on the top. You sit it on the top and then what you do, um, first thing you got to face it the way you got the harness and then you're going to plug it back in like if it was going back to the car. So you plug it back in. I'm gonna plug that right now in a second. And then once you plug it in, you're gonna grab your spark plugs and you're gonna put them on the top, just like push them all the way down so it can actually, uh, you know, click. And then you do that to every single one of them. And then just like the way you turn the key to see if the injectors are gonna, you know, uh, spray, you do the same thing for the spark plugs. You're gonna turn it to see if, you, if you're getting spark or not. Okay, so now we're gonna test the spotter plugs. I actually got them grounded to a, uh, you know, to a good ground using alligator clips. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and push them down so we can have a good uh, connection. Okay, and then I'm gonna jump in the driver's in the driver's seat, and I'm I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna turn the key and see if it sparks. Okay, so now we just got back from the store. We went and got a uh, actually a new ignition coil that comes with the ignition control module and then ignition boots. So in this case, we're, what I'm gonna be doing, uh, you guys don't have to do it, but I'm a, I wanna do it, um, is using the old ignition coil. It's actually held by three screws. One, two, and three. And then by removing those screws out, you get to take the cover on the top because i want to i want to reuse this i want to use the same cover to put it on the on the new one 
because the new one it doesn't say it's ecotech 2.2 so right now we got the new one over here i'm actually opening it right now i'm gonna move this out of the way and then i'm gonna lift this up i'm gonna just sit it on the floor and then open this okay So we got the new ignition coil sitting right in front of us and it comes with the ignition coil and as you can see it comes with the ignition coil boot also which is actually attached to the ignition coil uh, i can actually remove them also just in case if you guys are wondering there you go you can remove it so don't i don't want you to think that it's already attached and it's a one piece all together and everything um and then on the top this is what i was telling you guys it doesn't say it's ecotech 2.2 so i'm gonna and it comes with ignition control module so what i what i'm gonna be doing first i'm gonna remove this um uh phillips screws for the ignition control module and then once i take the ignition control module out i'm gonna flip it upside down and i'm gonna take this out one two and three and we're gonna be replacing the cover the old one and i'm gonna be using the the, the old one with the new one i'm gonna it's gonna be going in here so it, we can actually see uh, Ecotech 2.2. Okay, so actually I just pulled the screws out. So there's gonna be six of them. And then I wanna reuse the other six that I took out from the old one. Cause I don't wanna be using the Phillips. The Phillips screws, I don't wanna use them. I wanna use the torque spit. So I'm gonna be replacing those. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm, uh, I'm gonna pull this up just gentle you know wiggle it up there you go pull this up and then just sit it to the side and then lift this up and I'm gonna grab the old one I'll clean it in a second <laughs> I'll grab the old one and then sit this on the top. So before I put it back on, I wanna show you guys how it looks. So now I'm gonna be using the old one and I'm gonna sit it on the, on the top. I'm gonna flip it upside down and then use the Torx bit uh, screws to hold it down. Okay, and then once once it's in there, you grab the ignition control module and then carefully install it back on. Just push it down with your fingers, with your hand, and then grab the, the screws, start them by hand, and then finish it up by uh, using the, the Torx bit. Just snug them down it doesn't have to be that tight because this is plastic and if you over tight them you can actually break it okay so now that we actually got the ignition coil back on um, and we got the ignition control module back on also the only thing left to do is actually plug in the harness the connector back into the ignition control module so you just give it a push until it clicks and then lock it in into its position by pushing the white tap. There you go. And then the last but not least is putting the engine cover on the top.
put the oil oil cap back on now that we got that back on I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the car and start the engine and see what the car does Now that, now that the car is actually nice and running what I'm gonna be showing you guys I'm gonna walk into the back and I want to show you the tailpipe that is actually nice and smooth now now another thing that it was also uh, doing is that when I gave a gas wrap the engine up the check engine light will start flashing and before I gave a gas the rpm it was having such a hard time going up to a 2000 so right now it can actually go all the way up now they actually respond to you right away as soon as you give a gas now what i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna be erasing the check engine light and go for a test drive okay so now we're back in the car now now uh, i just want to show you that i did clear the check engine light now the tc came on but it was already on before when I took when I brought the car home um, right now it has zero DTC and I do want to let you guys know is that the car had a P0300 misfire code random misfire code uh, and then the other code that it was actually having it was a P0742 and that's actually a uh, something to do with the transmission torque converter clutch or something like that uh, but the reason why the code was coming on is because I was actually giving a gas to the car and the car was acting like if like if it was driving normal but uh, you know with the car hesitating and having a misfire it actually um, make the P0742 to come on but that's for sure that it's not going to come back on guarantee because the car was uh, hesitating so right now uh, another thing that I also noticed is as soon as I put it on drive or if I put it on, on reverse or if I put it on drive the car is actually nice and smooth so now we're gonna go for a, a test drive and see what the car does see if it reacts if it listens to me and if it actually uh, runs I'm bringing my uh, code reader with me just in case if it pops any codes I got it on drive and then this is the moment of true when I give a gas And it actually runs. It responds to my, basically the, the gas pedal right away. So the more I give it, and it actually, I'm getting more gas, and it revs the engine even faster. I can break down, like slow down, and when I slow down, if I come to a complete stop, the car actually stays running. And before, it was actually um, shaking really bad, and sometimes it even died on me twice. So let's go and continue a little bit more for a test drive. I'm gonna go left in here. And I'm gonna focus in the miles per hour so you guys can see. I'm giving it gas, and I'm gonna give it more and more. Now this is a four cylinder, so we don't wanna force the engine and blow the engine up. <laughs> we don't wanna call the customer and tell him, hey, you know your car actually, your engine blew up, you know, by me test driving it. So now you don't just need an ignition coil, but you also need an engine. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> uh, but you guys pretty much saw that the car is actually nice and, nice and running now. So this is gonna be today's videos, guys. If you guys like the video and if you guys think it was helpful, um, don't forget to like the video if you guys have any questions comments the you know post them down in the section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible and if you're not a subscriber consider a subscriber and I'll see you guys on the next one see ya